Welcome back to Book View Now. I'm Jeffrey Brown with the PBS NewsHour, and we are in our last hour, last but not least hour, of uh, live coverage of the National Book Festival here in Washington. We have talked to many, many different authors from a lot of different genres. I've got two younger authors with me now uh, to talk about their work. Daniel Alarcon, is, his latest book is At Night We Walk in Circles, and he's got a new one coming, City of Clowns, and Valeria Lucelli. Did I say that right? Absolutely. Okay. Her new book is The Story of My Teeth. Danielle and I have known each other before, but uh, we've never talked. You're from, you started to tell me, and you said you're from Mexico, but south of South Africa, and it was complicated. It's, it's a bit complicated, yeah. 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 I, was, I was born in Mexico, yeah. um, but I've lived elsewhere all my life, basically. I, I grew up partly in, in South Korea first, and in the 19, early 90s, late 80s. Then we transferred to South Africa in 1994, um, right during the, the first democratic elections in South mm -hmm. Africa. And from South Africa, we transferred back to Mexico as a family, but um, I wasn't quite at home with the fact of being a foreigner in Mexico, and I ended up leaving by myself. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up doing um, my last high school years in India in a boarding school. And so what does all this do to, what language? What's the primary language? Um, it's a confusion between English and Spanish and, and I, I, I speak French and Italian but not, not as well as I speak English and Spanish. But and you write in? Uh, I mostly write in Spanish. My three books have originally been written in Spanish and then translated and at times kind of co-translated by me. Um, it's a process of collaboration with my translator, really. And I also write fiction and non-fiction in English in, in media here in the States. And I think maybe now I'm writing in, in Eng a novel in English, but I'm not sure yet. Oh, really? Okay, you're not sure. I'm now, you, not had, sure. you also grew up in sort of two different, at least two, you only had two different places, as I yes, recall. Yes, only two, only two. And, I, I, uh, she, you've got a long way to go for Yes, and I was, uh, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, yeah. in a Peruvian household, so we spoke Spanish at home, and, um, and I did all my education, all my schooling in English. Um, so it was interesting, I was thinking about, about changing languages and then, you know, of, of the, the, that kind of desire to move and to be somewhere else in, in high school, I also felt that but just kind of to get out of where I was, whereas it was for you a continuation of your travels and your experiences. It was, and I guess Spanish, I don't know if this is the same for you, but for me Spanish was very much the language that was just spoken at home, it was the private language. Mm -hmm. And for the same reasons my Spanish was kind of awkward when I ever encountered teenagers uh, in Mexico when I visited, I felt like I was a 60 year old man was kind of repeating my, my father's way of articulating Spanish and, and I was always very aware that I, I, I didn't know how to play the linguistic games that the what, teenagers what was do. The, what was the reading? What was, what was the reading in your household that you grew up with? I grew up reading in English uh, because of school and also my sisters were older than me and we had a tradition in my house where we had to do our homework at the kitchen table all at the same time and no one could get up until everyone was done. So, uh, I don't know why. This was, I think, just to keep us from watching television. Um, and so, I, in practice, I was done the fastest because I was a kid that was the youngest, which meant that I was just sitting there bored and I would just start reading the books that my sisters were reading. Um, so, I started reading, you know, books that I had no business reading and didn't understand, like, you know, Kundera and, you know, reading Shakespeare plays uh -huh. uh, and, you know, whatever my sister had been assigned in high school. And thankfully, she had good teachers. Yeah. Um, I started reading when I was like eight, you know, and uh, you know, I think I learned a lot, although I couldn't really explain what it you was. You didn't know what it was you were learning. But I you didn't were know learning. what I was learning. Well, what, yes, so. what about starting to write? Were you as precocious, early? Yeah, I loved. I mean, I loved to write. I loved to tell stories from when I was very young, mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. I, I didn't think of it as a career choice or anything. It was just sort of like something that I always did. Mm -hmm. And always felt uh, like even if I didn't, I always ha felt like I had to do it. Uh, it wasn't like I, it wasn't a decision so much as an obsession. Mm -hmm. What about what about writing for you? Where did that come from? I mean, it was a process tied to reading as well, I mm -hmm. think. And 
I, I mostly read in English, that's also the language in which I went to school. And I arrived to Spanish kind of late as a reader. Um, so your reading was what? I mean, as, as a young person or even a teenager, you were reading English? I was reading literature. mostly English. I, yeah. One of the first things that I read that, that made me go crazy was um, um, Joseph Conrad. Strangely enough, someone who wasn't writing in his yes, own language, Yes, of course, language, he's a famous, way, right? a famous example. Of, uh, um, yeah. But when I arrived in India, and I encountered a, a group of young Latin American students in the school and started reading Garcia Marquez and Cortázar and Rulfo and Latin American authors with this group of students and, and a very good teacher that we had, I, I was suddenly made aware of the enormous tradition from which I also came and with which I had never actually had a, a deep relation. So my, my entry into Spanish was late, it was, I was 18 or so, and it was also the time that I, I started writing more seriously. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about the story of my teeth, which is a, quite a title, by the way. It's not a memoir. <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked this I want to make before. that clear. I want to make it right, very clear. That would not be maybe the most interesting <laughs> reading. Um, it's a very strange book. It, it's a book that began as a commission from an art collection that's called Humex. It's a contemporary art collection. And the Humex is in turn funded by a juice factory, as strange as, and bizarre as that may be. Yeah. So I was asked to write something for the catalog of an exhibition in the juice, in the, not in the juice factory, but in, in the actual cat, uh, exhibition space. And I asked if I could write for the workers in the factory instead of really for the gallery space. And we had some back and forths and I convinced them that it could be a good idea. And that's what I did. I, I wrote this novel originally in installments for workers at a juice factory. Wow. And uh, each week I sent them an installment and they recorded their reading. They read the installment out loud and then they would criticize and comment the installment. And then they would just go off and talk about their own lives and their own stories and I heard all that back home in, in mm -hmm. Harlem and I would then write the next installment so bringing all that in to the to what I was writing so it was it began like that I then worked on it and had you ever done anything like that no never never and it was a, it was a very beautiful unusual process. Yeah. It, was, it was really beautiful and I, and I thought while I was doing it that it, it would be hard that it was going to be hard to go back into a more traditional way of writing mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because it was just thrilling to, to be able to hear all these different voices reading something that's work in progress, reading it out loud and discussing it mm -hmm. and then bringing their own lives into it. Mm -hmm. so it, was, it was a wonderful process and it really shaped the book. The book. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was going to write when I began writing it yeah. so they, they really provided a, a course for this book. Yeah. Does that sound like a strange process to you? Well, you know, the, in the old sort of cigar rolling exactly. yeah, factories that, in that's Cuba, what I was thinking you know, of, that's of course, what they would the do. Readers and, that's where it yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I sort of want my own juice factory now for my next book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as an editorial sounding board, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, like yeah. Or we just start a factory so that we can. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's a tobacco yeah. factory. Yeah. <laughs> Your, uh, I know it, now, I read it, and I, we walk in circles, but I didn't, now I just, this just arrived. It's not out yet officially, right? right? This new book, City of Clowns. It's a graphic novel. Yeah. Why, what is it? Why, 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 why I, that? I, you know, I, I'm not a kid who grew up reading comics or, or uh, you know, watching, you know, superhero cartoons or anything. So, so it's not my culture specifically, but uh, I was in grad school and someone gave me a copy of Joe Sacco's work. Yeah. Uh, Joe Sacco is a fantastic graphic journalist. And, um, and it was the first time I really considered what could be done with the visual language. Uh, and I, I had a very good friend in Lima named Sheila Alvarado, who's a fantastic illustrator. And I bought copies of those Joe Sacco books. I gave them to her and I said, hey, why don't we do something like that? And uh, it was thrilling because nothing like that had been done in Peru yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that also put a lot of pressure on us because it was, we're going to set the bar. We wanted to set it very high. And so we worked on it for about a year and a half. Um, adapting, uh, basically, it was her favorite story from the collection. Yeah. So, uh, so here we are, you know. 
and 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 I I know because we've talked about this. You do podcasts as well in Spanish. Sure. So I mean, clearly you are looking for different ways to communicate with people. Yeah. I I, I think of myself now not as a novelist, but as a in Spanish we say narrador, which uh, narrator because it sort of encompasses all different ways of telling stories. Um, fiction, nonfiction, short story, novel, radio, now graphic novel, essay. Not so much essay because I'm not good enough, I think. Um, uh, but of course, like the marketplace that. likes to put you in boxes, I assume, right? I mean, that's the old, which box are you fitting in? The novelist or the essayist or a graphic novelist? Or, I, I, like, doesn't matter? I like not being in any box, yeah. you know? And, and I, I, I got to say, for podcasting, for trying my hand at radio, being in my 30s and Starting something completely new and which and working in a genre which I knew nothing was a was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Starting from zero and having to, to learn and forget everything you knew and and start over and be lost. Uh, I, I feel like every ten years one should try something they've never done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just have a minute left. What what is next for you? What are you working on? Well, they say it's bad luck to say too much about yeah. it, but um, I'm I'm working on a novel in English right now, at least right now, yeah. um, that I started writing last year when we went uh, with my family on a road trip from New York to Arizona. Um, at the same time as we were driving, my husband was telling the kids in the back stories about uh, the Chiricahua Apaches, and I was listening to the news on the radio mm -hmm. about the migrant crisis with children. I've been since then working with children in courts, so it's a, it's a novel that brings all of those elements together. All right, well, we'll, we'll look for it, right? right. Maybe, right? <laughs> <laughs> Valeria Lucelli and Daniel Alarcon, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you, you very much.